Can everyone hear me? OK, so um, how many of you were here at the last session? OK, good. So I'm not going to say all that stuff again. So if you weren't, <laughs> basically the last session, I, um, I, we kind of went over VMware, um, how they view OpenStack, how the high-level components fit together. Um, we had a couple customers like Wells Fargo and Intel talking about how they're using OpenStack and VMware. This session is entirely going to be live demo, which means things are probably going to break. <laughs> And I'm probably going to look like an idiot. But the, the goal is really just to, um, if you guys are much, I'm sure you're all kind of PowerPoint saturated by this point. So I'll have like two PowerPoints and then, and then I'll be on to just, you know, uh, live demo. I've got a couple, you know, a handful of scenarios that, that I'll kind of walk through. Um, the general model kind of think, of, think of me having a split personality here. There'll be, you know, Dan the IT guy and there'll be Dan the developer. And that's kind of typically the, the situation we see in our, in, our, in our customer engagements. It's about um, you know, someone, you know, an IT architect or an IT administrator who is looking to enable developers by giving them access to the OpenStack cloud, give them access you know, to great programmatic interfaces, um, and in a way that that, you know, that access to the infrastructure is not tightly coupled to the underlying vendor. So um, with that, I'm going to just jump in, assuming this actually works. Let's see, come on. Or not, let's see. OK, I'll get all the clicks at once then. <laughs> so um, just a little bit about the demo hardware. So um, this is just running off a of, you know, small cluster of five Dell servers um, with Intel Xeon processors, 64 gigs of RAM. Um, the, in, initially, we'll show how this works with just a, it's a pretty low-end NFS uh, storage array. But one of the things we'll want to emphasize in this demo is that um, you don't need actually any dedicated shared storage to use OpenStack with, with VMware. And in fact, we'll, we'll, we'll highlight a technology called vSAN, which um, takes the hard drives and the SSDs that are inside the hypervisor itself and effectively creates a virtual SAN. And so that's why we're calling out specifically, we've got 12 one terabyte hard drives in here and a two 200 gig SSDs. And you'll see when we make a volume on the SSD, it's fast. So um, cool, so let's move forward. And uh, just a word of warning, so this is, we just today we released um, Vova, which is this lab trial appliance uh, that people can use to get experience with OpenStack on VMware. And it's based on ISO's code. So you know, based on our testing, there's still some issues in there. So we may, we may stumble some, across some here. Um, so this is the high-level picture of, of, of what we're demonstrating. You know, we'll show people using Horizon, the CLI tools, or the API tools to provision to standard OpenStack interfaces from Nova, Neutron, Cinder, and Glance. So again, when you're using OpenStack with VMware, to your developers, to people consuming resources, we use only the standard interfaces. Anytime in this demo where you see a VMware tool, it's me operating as the, the cloud administrator or the cloud architect, you know, troubleshooting an issue, or, um, or doing capacity planning. If you're, a, if you're a developer in this environment, you only ever end up using the, the standard OpenStack tools and APIs. So um, first off, I'll just cut over to a desktop and uh, show you a bit about the Nova vCenter integration. So let me start off. This should look familiar to many of you. Nobody? Oh, come on. You're all on the thick client still. You don't like the web client, right? I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, join the club. <laughs> so let me see, is this, is this live? Oh, come on. All right. Yeah, my view, my view desktop is over. So I can actually cut over. I've got it, I've got it over here now. Let me see. OK, well, that sucks. So I've got backup windows. So let me. So this is, this is obviously the Horizon portal. And we'll be using that in a second. And it's 10 to 101, you said? OK, so what I'm pulling up here is the, is the vSphere web client for that cluster. And I'll just give you an idea of the background infrastructure that's in place with those Dell servers. Now, unfortunately, the reason we're using a view client was because that's local at VMware, and the latency is a little better. This will take a little time to load. So while that's loading, I'm going to go try to kill We knew we were going to hit problems. We didn't think it was going to happen before we started. <laughs> Come on. That's, oh, that'll back. OK. 
Maybe it's the internet here then. So, okay. So, here this should look familiar. So, I'll just show you the basic setup of the infrastructure. So, pretty common for a small OpenStack deployment. You just have, you know, one or two clusters. This is actually our compute cluster here. So, you can see those five Dell servers that we talked about. Um, if I go over and look at the cluster settings, for example, I have, um, you can see in the summary. Again, this is, this is me as a kind of an OpenStack administrator preparing my infrastructure to be consumed by OpenStack. So, you can see my capacity over here. I'm running vSphere DRS to balance the workloads evenly across the hosts. Um, I'm running vSphere HA so that if any of the individual servers goes down, it'll be transparently um, restarted. And uh, you can see here, I've already got a set of OpenStack VMs spun up. So this is the, the compute capacity. This is actually what the cluster that the tenants will be consuming. And then over here, I have a management cluster, which right now is just running on one, one server. In a real production environment, you'd run it on a handful so that you could have HA enabled in your management cluster as well. But you can see we've got a set of, of supporting VMs. So here's our OpenStack controller. This is where all the OpenStack services are running and the APIs are getting served up from. You can see we have a set of NSX um, appliances and um, for, for the networking. And we have a set of management tools like Log Insight, VC Ops, and obviously, very importantly, our vCenter. So um, we'll kind of touch each of those points as we go through this demo then. If we've got time left over, I'll, I'll, I'll take open requests for a demo. So, okay, so again, this is the administrator view. But you know, if you're a tenant, you would just log in um, using the standard tools. Okay, so you know I can do whatever I want. I can terminate instances. This is an instance we'll use later, so I'll leave that one here. But you know, I can go to launch instance, and again, this is all standard. If you guys have seen OpenStack APIs, there's nothing different here but the fact that it's on VMware. So I'll do, it. I can't even spell. Okay, so you know, I'm gonna name my VM, blah, blah, blah. You've probably all seen this. I'm gonna pick an image. I've just got a couple images, Debian images. These are both VMDK formatted images. We've now recently started supporting OVA um, as well. And I can just click launch. So again, from the, from the end user experience, they just see all the standard OpenStack. I could have done this from the CLI. I could have done it from the, the, the um, APIs directly, which we'll show later. So now that it's in spawning, that basically means that we're, uh, it's now talking to vCenter. And so if we go over to vCenter here, and if we actually go and, for example, look at the set of events that are happening on this cluster. We should, or I can actually just use the tag to find it, right? So, was it Atlanta? Was the... So, one of the cool things we've done is we've integrated vSphere and OpenStack. So, as you provision a VM um, onto the vSphere cluster, it automatically gets tagged um, and put into the vSphere inventory as an OpenStack VM. So, even though you know, I, could, I can search on the actual OpenStack name and click on that tag and find the, the underlying VM. So again, it's about making sure that all the operational tools you already know and are familiar with make it easier to run OpenStack. So I can go find this VM. You know, we'll look, if we look at its hardware, um, we'll, we'll see that it maps exactly to that flavor that we picked, which was the Nano flavor, which had, you know, what, one vCPU and... <laughs> You know, pretty, pretty, pretty small VM. But you'll also get great information that you can use for troubleshooting. For example, um, you can see here that I can find out what host it's on right now really easily, the resource pool, the storage, um, and I can see how much memory it's using. And if I go down here, I can see, again, all of the OpenStack information about the VM. So you can use a single pane of glass um, to be able to, to drive this. And We'll highlight later, I think this, this takes a little bit of time to fill in because the VM was just provisioned, but we're actually hooking into VC operations management as well um, so that it can monitor, monitor the VMs. So I think one of the things that, that I wanted to highlight as well is that obviously, you know, 
it's important to, it's, you know, it's one thing to give your developers the APIs, but it's really important to have you know, enterprise-grade infrastructure underneath. So for example, let's, let's imagine you're, you need to do a maintenance on a host, right? And you, know, you don't, don't even necessarily know what all these VMs in your OpenStack cloud are being used for. You don't know if you, know, you can take them down now or not. But obviously with VMware, what I can do is I can just, you know, this, this uh, host right now has two virtual machines on it, but that's, there's nothing that prevents me from you know, putting that guy into maintenance mode. And what you'll see over in the, in the upper right-hand corner over here is VMware will automatically start vMotioning, transparently vMotioning those VMs off, off that server so I could perform a maintenance on it. So you'll see up here, right, the server's entering maintenance mode. I think there were two VMs on there. Is that, yeah, so two virtual machines here. So as it goes into maintenance mode, it'll identify the set of VMs that are on the server, will identify additional targets, and it will vMotion those over soon. <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, this environment's nested, so it may be a little slow. Okay, so now it's going to go. So. But anyway, so you get, we get the idea. We can check in on that in, in another couple of minutes. Um, so, you know, obviously compute is this kind of the first thing. Um, it's, it's compute, compute alone doesn't really make a cloud, but I just wanted to do this. Even the simple use case, you can kind of highlight how the value um, of, of VMware still is relevant just from a, from a compute perspective, making sure that you can provide enterprise-grade infrastructure to your tenants. So, or maybe there weren't any VMs. Oh, well, it took them off. I guess it didn't tell me that, that they're migrating, but you can now see that there are zero VMs on this host, and it's now in maintenance mode. So. Okay, so let's go back, and so that, that, you know, that, that's a very simple scenario. Um, let's say now the, the world gets a little more complicated. Um, your developer is not just you know, spinning up individual VMs, they're actually building an application. That application needs to have, um, you know, it's application servers and it's um, database servers on separate uh, network segments. This is where we get, you know, we go from just having to worry about compute virtualization to worrying about full network virtualization. So if I go over, let's see if I'm logged out here or not, probably. Okay, so you can see here, this is the OpenStack network topology screen that a tenant would see. And right now I just have, you know, really simple network topology. I've got that VM I just spun up here and one that we'll use later to show you some volume stuff. And you know, the world's pretty simple. You notice when I booted the VM, I didn't even pick a network. I was just put it on the one network that's there. But let's say you know, now I need a bunch of development environments because I'm going to do continuous integration for this app. And I want to test it in a realistic setting where it's actually on two different network segments because that's, that's the recommended deployment model. So instead of uh, subjecting you to a whole ton of clicking, I will highlight the fact that, of course, you know, not only can you use um, Horizon, but you can use all the standard OpenStack APIs and tools. So what I have here is a simple a Python script that basically what it does is it talks to the OpenStack APIs, it talks to Neutron APIs and Nova APIs, and it says, you know, create a router, attach it to the public network, create an app and a database um, tier, a network tier behind that, and I'll spin up two app servers on, on one of those networks and two database servers on another. So, and then what we'll do is we'll go behind the scenes again as, a, as an administrator and take a look at what's happened within, uh, within NSX. So again, this is what the tenant would see. Great, everything seems to have worked. And the tenant would go back to his or her network topology and great, now we've got that same network from before, net one, but we also have this, um, we've got a new router with two different networks behind it. I'm not sure why the colors are all changing. It might be an OpenStack bug. It's like a Christmas lights or something. <laughs> Um, here you can see this is our database network, this is our app network, and there's our app server 2 and app server 1, and this would be database server 2 and database server 1. So anyway, at a press of a button, I can go pop up not just VMs, but actually virtual networks. And um, kind of like, you know, it, it's, it's cool to show this, and actually there's probably a lot of companies who could give a demo like this that, you know, shows, shows, shows the, right, um, you know, the multiple networks being created by OpenStack. What really kind of, I think, sets, sets VMware NSX apart is the underlying implementation of it. So, you know, what we're going to log into, oh, that's not, cross, that's, that's not good. <laughs> was I really doing cross-site scripting on that? I didn't know I was that talented. Okay. <laughs> 
I probably had an old cookie or something. Yeah. So, okay. So anyway, this is the NSX dashboard. This is kind of, again, the administrator dashboard for NSX. So you can see, again, this is a pretty tiny demo environment. We've got you know, 22 different isolated networks that, that tenants have made. What you can see here is, again, here are our five ESX hosts that we're, that, we're, that we're putting VMs onto and that NSX is managing from a compute perspective. We have one Ubuntu host. What that is is that's actually the OpenStack controller that's implementing the DHCP functionality. Um, if you're familiar with that. So again, NSX is completely multi-hypervisor. We could have KVM, we could have KVM hypervisors in here too, and you could create networks where I have some VMs from KVM and some VMs from ESX. Um, we even have tons of customers um, who who use this, you know, purely on Zen server or purely on uh, on KVM. So there's no ESX required. It's multi-hypervisor. It can work with whatever hypervisor you have. Um, this is a pretty simple setup. Normally in production, this would there would be three controller nodes for for HA and scale out, you know, all of that. And then, so what what you can do is, for example, you can go and there's a lot of cool search functionality in here. So what we'll do is we'll actually search for the port we just created, so we can kind of look at how NSX implemented underneath the covers. So what do we call that? DB something. Let's see, where's the database now? Cool, so here's the database net that I, that I just created. You know, I probably could have browsed to it here, but you should see in our internal setup where we've got, I think, you know, at times 5,000 different tenant networks, right? That, that, that's why this is a search-based interface, because when you're using it, put, once you give the people the ability to just dynamically create networks, they find all kinds of cool use cases for it. So, you know, I can look into here, and so this is the DB switch, so you would expect Trick question, you would expect four ports on here. Does anyone know why? This is an OpenStack deep dive question. Nobody? Okay. I used to run this project, so I'm in, into the details. But um, so there's four ports on this network. There's the two database servers. There's the uplink to the router, right? Because we, we, have, we, we gave it an uplink to a router. And there's the DHCP uh, agent that's listening on there. So what we can do here is we can actually pick one of these ports. Um, let's see. And we can look into the individual configuration. What I'm going to show you is a really cool um, troubleshooting tool that you can do to find out, you know, if a tenant calls up and says, oh, I'm having connectivity problems. Right? You're like, well, I don't have access to your VMs. How am I supposed to do that? You can pull up their, you know, the VM on the network. And then there's this port connections troubleshooting tool. Let's see. So what I'm going to then do is say, basically, let's say between these two hosts on the network, tell me what that connectivity looks like. Tell me if the physical network is actually implementing it or if there are, there are problems in the underlying infrastructure. So NSX, for example, is actually constantly sending probes into your physical infrastructure to understand whether there are faults in your physical infrastructure that would then be impacting your logical networks. Um, so again, this is an example of kind of a, something like I said, you know, anyone could do that, that, that first part of the demo, but really having, you know, th this is the kind of stuff you have in a product when it's been in, been in production deployments for two plus years. So, here what you can see is that you get a full mapping of, of where these two hosts are, what, um, you know, what hypervisors they're on right now. So, so you can see this guy is actually on one of the ESX hosts, and this is actually the DHCP port here. This is the KVM. So this is a, this is a connectivity that's being created cross hypervisor. Um, I can see, for example, you know, this is using overlay technology, so they're tunneling. So I can see the IP addresses that we're using for tunneling, and I can see the liveness checking that all those tunnels are up and fully functional. So, you know, at this point, I know the problem's not in my physical network. Um, if one of these shows up as red, that's when you, you, you get a hold of your physical networking person and say, for some reason, there's not connectivity between these two addresses. Um, another really cool thing about this is that, right, we fully control this vSwitch. And so there's a lot of cool things you can do that you can never, you know, don't have the flexibility to do in hardware. Um, so, for example, I can actually just dynamically request a, a ping that gets injected into the, into the logical network. So I can ping from this port to that port. I can see it got injected and it got delivered. I can ping from this port to that port. So again, this is all using, um, you can see, it should say it right here, yeah. So it even tells you what type of tunneling it's working. So STT is a really highly optimized overlay tunneling protocol. So you can get um, full wire speeds with very low overhead. Um, overhead is definitely something when you're looking at a network virtualization solution, you should be very aware of. Um, so, so yeah, again, so you know, 
this used to be the, I used to be the product manager for this, so I could talk for an hour about this. But uh, you know, come up and find me or come to the VMware booth afterwards. NSX, really cool product. Um, really kind of game changing in terms of the set of, um, of scenarios that you can enable for your customers in terms of letting them just build, and build their own dynamic networking topologies in, in addition to just requesting VMs. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to then cut over. Or did they just log now? So that's fine. Okay. So then let's say that um, you know, I'm going to go in and, and talk a little bit about storage. So, so this, is in a, this is an Ubuntu VM I have, and right now it's got a volume attached. So let's say you know, I've got your database, um, got your database on a persistent volume, so if the VM fails, um, you can attach it to another one and, and you won't lose your data. So what I can do here is actually log into the console. And uh, let's see. so I don't know if you're familiar with FIO. Maybe FIO is a is a basic Linux um, input output benchmark uh, tool. And so, for example, what you can see here is that I have um, let's see, I have a basic volume um, for my NFS data store mounted here, um, and that's you know, like I said. Uh, with the VMware integration, you can use any data store that can connect and work with vSphere. You can use to store your primary disks, your volume, and your glance, glance images. So it's very, very simple. So I can run FIO, and I'll just run it for 10 seconds to show. Um, this, is, this is not the world's great NFS storage that, I, that I'm comparing to. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to say NFS is, 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 is good or bad. This is just um, something we had. My main goal here is to show you that it's very easy to create multiple tiers of storage inside your, your, your OpenStack environment when it's based on VMware. So what it's doing is actually splatting some files onto, um, onto the volume. And then you can tell it's very slow storage. Um, and then what it will do is it'll basically run a 10 second performance test. And um, we'll come back to this. I'm going to show you over in the vSphere web client that at this point it is, um, let me find that guy. So again, isn't that convenient? It's I don't, not even, let's see, as long as it loads. Oh, oh the list, okay, no, it's, I, need, I need vol one, right? Not as convenient as I was hoping. So, okay, so yeah, so now it's running. You can see very low number of IO operations um, per second, about 300. So what we can do is we can go back to the instance and uh, let's see, E3F. So I wanna show you really quickly the, um, the setup in vSphere right now. There it is. And you'll see that, that because of this volume, there's one extra disk attached, but that disk is currently mapped to, um, I'll see it. Um, it's currently mapped to an NFS data store, which I mentioned is quite slow. Um, so what you can see, right, there's a primary disk that's 40 gigs, as you would expect. There's a one gig volume attached, and it's attached to the NFS data store. So how many of you are familiar with um, vSAN? All right, decent number. All right, so like I said, this, this, this whole setup is vSAN enabled. So that means that, um, that means if I go click on here, it, the, one of the really cool things about vSAN is if you've got the, the SSDs and the disks in, the, in the, the servers, it's basically a one button or two button or something click to enable it. So compare that to managing an entirely different storage array. It's very, very slick. So. I think you can probably, is it over here, right? Yeah, where I click on sand and there's a. So yeah, so it's vSAN is turned on and I can click edit and turn it off. <laughs> so, but I won't do that because I want to show it in the demo. So, and then uh, there's storage policies as well. How many people are familiar with storage policies? Oh yeah, it's not too many. So storage policies is actually a, a new capability I think it's new in 5.1, but uh, that lets you kind of create different tiers of, of, of storage and expose it instead of on a data store by data store basis, but as, as groups of data stores. So we have two policies, and actually we created a gold policy. Um, probably should have been bronze because that NFS is pretty slow. Um, <laughs> but, and, then, and then we create a new platinum policy um, that uses the vSAN data store. And what that enables us to do is, again, this is me as an administrator. I would configure these policies. But then... I could, as an administrator, I could expose the ability for my tenants to create different volumes that map to these different policies. 
So right over here, you can see that database volume that was of type gold that I had created earlier. And now that I've got vSAN in the environment, um, I'll also have the option of clicking this and creating a platinum volume. So I'll create another one gig platinum volume. Oh. <laughs> Cool, and then I will just attach that to that exact same VM. So we can basically just run that same test again, but point it at a different mount point. I don't want that. So again, that VM was Ubuntu Vault test. So this will take, so basically what this is doing is now it's reaching out, it's creating a VMDK on that vSAN data store, that's one gig, and attaching it to that VM. So, um, what we can do is actually we can probably go back over here, find that VM again, and by the time this guy's saying attached, we should see a. So this is the the initial attach is a little slow because it's actually going out and actually provisioning the capacity there. So let me. Watching paint dry, huh? Just let me see this. So one of the interesting things about, um, okay, there it is. So remember, hard disk two was on the NFS data store. Hard disk three should be on the vSAN data store, right? And it is. So now let's actually go into the VM. We'll go back into our instances. And I'm just going to run a quick script to mount that volume and splat a um, ext3 file system on it and all that jazz. And then I will run the exact same test. So let's see if this. worked in my environment, so we'll see. <laughs> yes, proceed. Okay, so now let's, okay, great. So now we've got these two volumes mounted, and I've got just a version of that same FIO config um, that just points to that different directory. So if you look at it last time, we, uh, we got about, let's see, 300, 300, um, is it 300 IOs? Yeah. So. Now, again, this is not saying vSAN is, is this much better. This is just because it's reading from Flash, right? So you'll see it's something insane that it gets like uh, 16,000 or something because it's, um, but the point is just that A, vSAN lets you enable Flash and expose Flash to your, um, yeah, sequence is like 14,000 IOs. So, you know, again, I'm not claiming, this is, this is almost entirely due to the fact that it's Flash that's locally in the hypervisor versus this pretty slow NFS storage. But the point is that it's very easy to expose all kinds of different tiers of storage, and that even within vSAN, you can expose different tiers. So even if I didn't have that separate NFS storage, I could have vSAN um, data stores that get more access to the flash, and vSAN data stores that just get access to the spinning dish and a tiny disk and a tiny bit of flash. Um, and that's, you use storage policies for that. So incredibly powerful tool. Can you, can you actually hold till, till the end? Unless you were gonna clap. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take applause at any point. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so let me quickly show two other cool tools. Um, am I 10 minutes or what? About 10 minutes. Yeah. About 10 minutes. Okay, so this is vCenter Operations Management. How many people know VC Ops? Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so again, VC Ops, you can already use VC Ops to, um, to monitor your, your underlying vSphere NSX um, infrastructure. What I'm going to be demoing here is actually taking that to the next level and actually having VC Ops manage OpenStack itself. So first off, you know, if I'm an OpenStack administrator, it's a complicated beast in of itself, right? It's how many different services running. You know, how do you know that they're all up? How do you know they're all healthy? Um, let's see, is this loading? Let's see. So for example here, now I'm looking at the OpenStack storage service here. And what I can see here is that the overall health of the storage service is good. Um, I can see that this is the actual cinder processes they're up, they're running just fine. And I can see that you know, all my data stores are healthy, they're fully connected, and they're, they're fully operational. 
And then in terms of things like capacity planning, right, I can go over, I can actually look at all my data stores. And all the thresholds here are, are, are tweakable. I'm just using the default ones. But um, you can see here that these, you know, this is our demo cluster. So this is our compute cluster. And um, you can see that, you know, the, for example, the vSAN data store um, is what, maybe this one? Let's see. I can't even remember. Oh, no, yeah, this, this was the vSAN data store, right? So that thing's huge. We just put one volume, one, one gig volume on it. That's way green. But the NFS data store, we've put enough stuff on it that it's at 37% you know, um, capacity right now. So you're starting to see yellow, starting to get some sense of, oh, if that's the type of storage I may need to get more of, um, now might be a good time. And then there's also really cool um, OpenStack awareness in terms of individual tenants. So let's say a tenant calls, calls up and says, I've got a problem. You can go into VC, you know, I already showed how you can go into vCenter and pull up their VMs, but you can even go into VC Ops and put in their, you know, look up their tenant and, uh, and get more information about them. So, for example, here's the, the tenant that we've been using. So let me splat that out. So, what you can see here is now all, all information about all my VMs is the Dan Went tenant, right? And again, this is OpenStack awareness, so it makes it much easier for you to troubleshoot. You can see any alerts that apply to me as a tenant, either because they're directly my VMs or because my VMs reside on the hardware that is having an alert. So it makes it very easy for you to understand you know, what, what problem might be triggering what this tenant is talking about. And then I can traverse the relationships from my OpenStack VMs, the OpenStack networks, um, to the underlying VMware infrastructure like the ESX host and the NSX servers um, that, 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 they're, that they're currently on. So again, it makes it very easy to traverse these relationships and understand that a, that a tenant might be seeing a problem or a whole group of tenants might be seeing a problem because of one fault in your underlying infrastructure. So this could probably be a one hour demo on its own, but I've got to, got to keep moving. So the last tool that I want to show is, is something really cool. Um, lo probably not many people know Log Insight. How many people know Log Insight? Yeah, that's what I thought. So Log Insight is actually a really cool tool. We use it in our internal OpenStack cloud that we run at VMware. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not doing it service to call it a log collector because it does so much more than that, but basically all the logs get sent to, sent to it for analysis. So there's a, you know, there's a set of kind of auto-populated dashboards. So for example, I can monitor my vSphere infrastructure in here. I can monitor my NSX infrastructure. I can really highly customize a set of dashboards um, that are shown that comes with a lot of baked in dashboards. But by far the coolest part um, of, of uh, Log Insight is, is the dynamic analysis you can do. So this is, a, this is actually a real error that we had in our demo environment about uh, yesterday morning. I was like panicking. I was like, oh, the DHCP is down. <laughs> Why is it down? And um, so, you know, if you actually just search for DHCP and error in these logs, um, oh, I need to go to, because it was yesterday now. So let me go. Or no, not, not six hours. I need last. So what, um, what Log Insight does is it's incredibly powerful machine learning that actually matches um, it goes through all of your logs and does pattern matching to understand when you're getting a bunch of log messages that are basically the same thing. So what you can see here is, you know, there were, oh, so this, is, this is OpenStack for you, right? There are 105,000 of these log messages in a period of just about a day because <laughs> DHCP wasn't happy. But Log Insight says, well, this is really one problem, right? And um, so, you know, we're able to see when, it, when they started and actually this, you know, I realized that when we started, we had just restarted our OpenStack controller, and that's actually what triggered this problem. So that combined with being able to look at the log message, um, I was actually able to, I had to go and clear out all my existing DHCP state and, and reboot again, and after that it was working, and it's been working since then. So you'll notice what, what I can do here right, is I can actually take this query, and for example, I could take any dynamic query that I do and turn it into a dashboard that's on one of my pages. So what we're doing as, as an OpenStack team is actually doing a lot of this work for you and going out and finding what types of errors, for example, um, we probably won't have time to demo this, but um, you know, anytime someone hits a quota limit, right, that's something interesting because that user is, is um, experiencing a problem. So um, what you can do is you can create dashboards. You can also create alerts, right, to say that, you know, maybe if there's over, you know, 100,000 uh, <laughs> DHCP mess log message, error messages in a day, send me an email because something's probably not so hot. Right, um, you know, so it's highly configurable from that perspective. So here's an example of a, of an email. Oh, come on! 
Okay, well, I won't show that. But believe me, my, my, my VMware email got, a, got an alert when uh, we were testing last night and went over our quota limit. All right, so again, the thing about OpenStack, people tend to focus on, oh, how do you install OpenStack? How do you get it started? That's not even the, that's not the half of it. That's not the third of it. That's not the tenth of it, really. It's how do you successfully operationalize these environments? So the combination of you know, the core vSphere and NSX troubleshooting capabilities combined with VC ops and tools like Log Insight, you know, really fill in a lot of key gaps that exist in you know, what you can get as, as raw OpenStack. And so um, I think with that, was there anything else we were? Yeah, so you know, I can, you know, it, it's one, one other cool thing to show is you can actually, so like let's say this instance had, um, had gone to an error state. It obviously didn't, but anyone who's been in OpenStack for a while knows that that can happen. Um, so I can go to Log Insight, you know, just take this UUID and paste it in. And I don't want event types, I want events. So now I just basically want every event that's been related to this particular VM booting. And what's really cool here is you can see it going through all the different services, right? Here's a Neutron message. Um, let's see more Neutron. Neutron's pretty chatty. Um, you know, here's a vCenter. Here's actually from the ESX host itself. So right, I could trace this all the way through OpenStack, all the way to some issue that happened on your NFS data store where it ran out of space. Right? And that's just extremely powerful from, uh, from, from, with respect to having a well-integrated solution that helps you get to the bottom of, of, of problems quickly. So um, with that, I think we'll probably go to we'll probably just take questions. Um, I think there was one over there that I cut off earlier. Then I'll go to you. Do you want to step up to the mic, or? You gonna ask me to demo something? No, yeah, uh, <laughs> really nice and impressive uh, set of tools for OpenStack. Thanks. Uh, my question was about the uh, Cinder demo that you gave. Uh huh. And you had storage policies gold and platinum in the V Center. Mm hmm. And then when you went to the Horizon and we created a volume, it showed you those two options, gold and platinum. Yep. So does it mean that any storage policy that I create in vCenter no, it's not automatically automatic. comes as a volume type in Cinder? No, it's not automatic because you may not want to expose all of your storage policies out. Okay. Right? So Cinder, um, there's a Cinder command that uh, basically lets you create these volume types. And okay. what you do is you go Cinder type create, um, and then you set what's called an extra spec. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a special extra spec format that is the kind of VMware colon storage policy. Then you put the storage policy name. Okay, so that's how you. Oh, so Alex is, is giving the talk at um, on vSAN at 5:20, and so there'll be more of a deep dive on the storage policy specifically. Okay, so so it was because of the configuration that the names kind of matched. Uh, yeah, doesn't... they don't have to match actually. Okay. Okay. Um, but it's so the yeah so you could you could expose it to the tenant as some other name if you preferred. Okay, thanks. Yep. You had a question? So, uh, an interoperability uh, question. In OpenStack, like for the Verizon dashboard, when you go in and you go to a VM and you say create a snapshot, what, what you get is a clone stored in glass. What do you get with the, uh, the VMware interface? Is it the same behavior? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right, our goal is, again, it's about letting developers get the same set of behavior regardless of the, of the underlying platform. So, everything we do, so yeah. OpenStack's notion of snapshot is not quite the same thing as VMware's notion of snapshot. So what we do is we conform to the definition of the OpenStack API and give you a OpenStack-like snapshot. Okay, thanks. Yeah, great question. Um, yep. So when creating volumes via OpenStack, you don't have the options that you would through vSphere. You know, thin, thick, lazy, eager. So <laughs> oh, well. So, the, <laughs> so that, that's, that's another good question. So the same kind of the extra spec mechanism that I talked about where you're able to um, specify storage policy, you're also able to, for example, say thick versus thin, several of those things. So you could, you know, you as a cloud administrator can create a service offering. You know, maybe you have a enterprise grade volume and you have a, you know, cheapo volume or something. And enterprise grade is, you know, lots of flash and thick provisioned and your, your low end one is thin provisioned. It's a good question. All right. Well, um, I think what do we have next up? We have the hands on. Oh, sorry. One more question. So if you have multiple clusters in your data center, then from OpenStack, when you're creating a VM, can you pick which cluster you want to choose? So the general model of OpenStack is that it's just kind of one pool of capacity. Now, OpenStack 
and, and so that would kind of be the default configuration even if you had multiple clusters. Now OpenStack supports something called uh, host aggregates which let you kind of say, oh, well, this infrastructure is not quite like this infrastructure. Maybe it has a different type of storage. Maybe one has HA enabled and one doesn't, something like that. Um, and so VMware, the, the VMware integration does work with host aggregates. And typically what you do there is, it's kind of similar to what we've been talking about with the volumes, is that you can create um, Nova server flavors that map to different backend host aggregates. And again, so you, know, you might have an enterprise grade server that maps to a vSphere cluster um, that has HA enabled and has really good storage on it. And the features like HA and DRS, they have to be enabled on the cluster or so is that optional? DRS does at this point. Um, it's basically, we don't have our Nova driver dynamically spread. We just kind of rely on DRS for that. Um, it's, it's not a fundamental thing. It's just pretty much every customer we've engaged with wants to have DRS enabled there. Um, HA is entirely optional. It's up to you in terms of whether you want to enable that on your clusters. Thank you. Oh, cool. So what time is the next? Let me pull up. So we, so again, thank, thanks for coming, folks. Um, we have another set of, I think it was probably a break. Yeah, there's a 10-minute break. There's a 10 minute break, and then another, um, we'll be doing the hands-on lab with some Genius Bar in the back, and then we'll have other OpenStack vendors kind of demoing how their technologies work with vSphere and NSX. Thanks. Uh -huh. uh,